Let's talk about sex toys in the medieval yeah. period. Yeah. Because these things existed. Mm-hmm. So um, one of my favorite things uh, that medieval people were really into is dildos. Uh, and, uh, this is like one of these, these great things because, you know, again, like a lot of the time when we think about like sex toys and stuff like that, we go, well, this is like this super modern thing. I um, mean, you know, there's like that myth that, uh, vibrators were invented by Victorian doctors to masturbate women. It's not true. Sorry. They just were invented because they're cool. Uh, it wasn't doctors who did it. To well, calm hysteria, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's a myth. It's a great myth, but um, it doesn't exist. But so obviously medieval people couldn't have vibrators, but we know that they had dildos. And the reason that we know they have dildos is, um, well, there's a couple of different sources, right? So one of them is this thing that's called um, a penitential. The penitential is like a guidebook for priests. Um, so if you um, are a priest and you're going to give confession to someone, you'll have this little penitential. And so maybe they're not like forthcoming. They're not telling you all the sins that they have. It's got like questions you can ask them to be like, oh, how well have you done this? So that they will have to like, you know, admit that they've done something wrong. Um And it also tells you like what you should give as penance. So like the punishment for when you've done these bad sins. Um, And there's this one that it dates, I think uh, to the eighth century by a Bouchard of Worms, who was like a bishop. And he writes in this penitential and he says, well, a thing that you should ask women is if they have fashioned something in the shape of the male member to a size uh, to fit their, um, their infernal imagination and infernal imagination. Yeah, it's like, so that's a great word. I feel like that's just a wonderful word for a vagina. Yeah. Like, like my infernal imagination. imagination. And so, you know, and what he means is like, are you making dildos? Right. Um, and, and then, you know, and then he says, and like pleasuring yourself with them. Right. So it's right. really clear. He's talking about making things like shaped like a dick. Right. Um, and it's like, if so, you're very naughty. Um, you should fast for like, I think it's like a year or something on Sundays and, uh, feast days, which also sucks. Cause that means like, you don't get to like have the big feast at Christmas and everything. Boo. Mm-hmm. Bad, bad penance. We don't like it. Um, but then the next thing he asks is like, and have you taken that and have you fastened it about your hips with straps, um, in order uh, to do so to another? So then the next question is like, are you using it as a strap on? Wow. So it's not just like, a, and it's like, it doesn't make it clear. Like if you're doing it to another woman or like maybe you're pegging, I don't know, but they right. also like, there's also this really clear evidence that like, yeah, people are making strap ons. And the thing about penitentials is they're really difficult because they're like written by these celibate dudes who are priests, right? So you don't know if like it's necessarily something that's definitively happening or if this guy's like, oh, I bet they're making dildos. <laughs> or like, you know, like ask them, I'm going to ask them about the dildos. Just jerking off thinking about other people making dildos. Exactly. And just like, oh, were you, were you doing it? Were you a naughty girl? Were you a naughty girl? Did you make a dildo? Oh, God. Like, so that's like one side of it. So, you know, you right. Think, all right, well, this is just like some horny dude making stuff up. But we have the receipts, literally. So like we have actual receipts that last from, I think this is somewhere in the lowlands. So it's like Holland or Belgium or whatever, which is like some of the richest part of uh, medieval Europe. And there's this leather maker who made a leather red, a red leather dildo with like a strap on for some woman. And it's like, it's not that he made it. It's that it's red that I like. Yeah. I like that. There's like this erotic kind of like aesthetic going on there too, where it's yeah. like, I, don't, I just don't, I don't just want like a strap on it. It's got to be red. Like, okay, that's yeah. what I want. And it's really nice to be able to have that because the thing is, you know, dildos aren't like an object that really survives particularly long because it's like, you're not going to like leave it in your will. You're not like, oh, um, I leave. <laughs> I bequeath my dildo, dildo to my son. Yeah, like, please take care of it. You know, I hope that it means as much to you as it meant to you. That's not from this that. dildo has been passed down <laughs> through the family for generations. Your great great grandfather would have wanted you to have it. <laughs> I, you know, I, wish, I wish that stuff did happen, you know, but it's like. So we lose them. Like we lose the dildos along the way. And so it's really easy to go. (laughs) I'm sorry, but that's a great book title. The dildos we lose along the way. 
<laughs> just a memoir, you know? <laughs> it's just... Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.